I moved from Russia to China with my family 16 years ago. When I arrived, I couldn't speak a word of Chinese. It was very difficult for me to adapt this new way of life. But soon, this adversity was gone. In 2008, not so long after the Olympic Games in Beijing, I began to attend the Chinese primary school. This is how I started my journey of studying Chinese. Of course, it was not easy at first. I often found myself speaking Russian, trying to express myself to my Chinese classmates. But somehow we understood each other and became good friends. Now after studying Chinese for more than 13 years, when I speak, many people think I sound Chinese and that I even have a Beijing accent. The Chinese have a saying, Ru xiang sui su. that means, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Many people are surprised to hear how long I have lived in Beijing. In fact, China became my home. What impresses me the most about China is its traditional culture and long history. I've learned how to write Chinese calligraphy, martial arts, and even something about traditional Chinese medicine. So I've truly experienced Chinese life. I've also seen how China changed over 16 years, and I've changed with it. When I first came here, there weren't so many foreigners, nor many skyscrapers. But that has completely changed. China has become the second largest economy and has managed to lift about 750 million people from poverty. No other country has ever achieved such results. I'm truly excited to witness this rapid change, something that I think the world began to get a glimpse of during those Olympic Games in 2008. Over the years, I've witnessed China host major international meetings, such as the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, the G20 Summit, and the Belt and Road Forum. This year, China and Russia extended the Sino-Russian Treaty of Friendship they committed 20 years ago. Relationships between the two countries are mature, stable and strong and can withstand this test of international adversities. The two countries firmly support each other on issues concerning their core interests. In 2019, China and Russia upgraded their relations and Tsinghua University awarded President Vladimir Putin an honorary degree. That year, the university also set up a Russian institute on its campus. That greatly motivated me to study international relations at Tsinghua. Since then, I've taken part in many diplomatic events in China, such as those of Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the Russian Embassy in Beijing. I've also become a member of the Belt and Road Initiative Association at Tsinghua. So when I graduate, I will have a great deal of experience and knowledge, and I will be able to draw in making a contribution to the continuing good friendship between our two countries. On July 11th, when the 20th anniversary of the Sino-Russian Friendship Treaty was celebrated, China's foreign minister and state councillor Wang Yi said, Russia and China are not allied countries, but our friendship is even better than an alliance. As a Russian, his words greatly impressed me, and I have personally experienced this friendship. The Sino-Russian relation is now better than it has ever been, and I feel its warmth in my own life. For example, when Chinese express their friendship towards me and say we are good neighbors. In fact, sometimes I get older people speaking Russian to me and who obviously enjoy it. All of this fuels my motivation to learn more about Sino-Russian relations and are working together even more closely. I believe that Russia and China will go further and further with one another and together will play a key role as the world faces the great challenges of our times, such as the pandemic and climate change. I know that together we have so much to contribute that us all together enjoys this wonderful friendship and its fruits. Thank you.